readers, I have a wonderful book to share with you. It is called Listen Buddy, written by Helen Lester and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. Buddy's father had a beautiful big nose. He was a great sniffer. Buddy's mother had beautiful big teeth. She was a great chomper. Buddy had beautiful big ears. It didn't matter. When Buddy's parents sent him to the vegetable stand to get a basket of squash, he came home with a basket of wash. When they asked him to buy 15 tomatoes, he came home with 50 potatoes. Now listen carefully at the mistakes that Buddy makes because he does not listen. Buddy's father said, listen, Buddy, will you please bring me a pen? Who, asked Buddy. You, said his father. Will you please bring me a pen? A what, asked Buddy. A pen, said his father. Will you please bring me a pen? Sure, said Buddy. But his father said, listen, Buddy. The words do not tell you what Buddy does. How do you know? You need to listen to the words and also look closely at the illustrations in order to understand everything that happens in this story. Buddy's mother said, listen, Buddy. Will you please give me a slice of bread? Who, asked Buddy. You, said his mother. Will you please get me a slice of bread? A what of what, asked Buddy. A slice of bread, said his mother. Will you please bring me a slice of bread? Sure, said Buddy. But his mother said, listen, Buddy. What has Buddy brought? his mother instead of a slice of bread. Somehow Buddy's mind was always wandering too far away from those beautiful ears. His parents tried yelling, listen Buddy. They tried whispering, listen Buddy. Nothing worked. What do par Buddy's parents try when he doesn't listen? Let's yell, listen, buddy. Now let's whisper, listen, buddy. Why do you think they try whispering? One day, Buddy got permission to go for a long hop. He had never been allowed to go beyond the vegetable stand. Listen, buddy, his parents warned him. Just remember that at the end of the road, there are two paths. The path to the left will lead you around the pond and back home. But the path to the right will lead you to the cave of the scruffy varmint. And that scruffy varmint has a nasty temper. So be sure to take the path to the left. Right? asked Buddy. Left, said his parents. Right, said Buddy. And with a salute to his paw, he hopped away. What do you think Buddy's going to do? Turn to a partner and say, what do you think Buddy's going to do? Feeling very grown up, Buddy hopped along, past the vegetable stand and on to the end of the road. Now let's see, he pondered. Was I supposed to go left or right? Or right or left? He thought as hard as he could. The last thing I said was right. So that must be right. Right he went. 25 hops later, Buddy discovered that right was wrong. There in front of his cave was a scruffy varmint doing scruffy things that varmints do, like snarling, mussing his hair, rubbing dirt on his knees, and scratching a whole lot of itches. At his feet was a large soup pot. 
What are you going to do with that soup pot? Asked Buddy. What does one usually do with a soup pot? Bake pie? Replied the scruffy varmint, not too kindly. I'm going to make some soup. Some what? Asked Buddy. Soup, snarled the scruffy varmint. And look at the scruffy varmint's cave. Buddy had forgotten his parents' warning about the scruffy varmint. He asked eagerly, eagerly, may I help? The scruffy varmint was not fond of having company, but with help he'd have his soup sooner, so he said, all right. Bunny Rabbit, come help me gather firewood. Who, what, asked Buddy, you, firewood. Buddy eagerly hopped ahead of the scruffy varmint. Very gently, he gathered a large prickly bundle, which he held out proudly. Roughly, the varmint grabbed the bundle. I said, firewood, not briarwood, he yelped, plucking the sharp thorns from his paws. Later, when the pot was filled with water, the scruffy varmint lay against a rock, licking his paws and barking orders. Hustle, bunny rabbit. Get the flour. Yes, sir, said Buddy. Five inches of salt. Yes, sir, said Buddy. Fifteen tomatoes. Yes, sir, said Buddy. And a big load of squash. Yes, sir, said Buddy. The scruffy varmint rose and gave the soup a stir. He took a taste. It tasted a little like, well, a little, maybe it needed some pepper. Bunny rabbit, get the pepper from the left side of the kitchen sink, the varmint growled. Who'll get the what from the where side of the where what, asked Buddy. The scruffy varmint repeated, who get the what from the worst side of the world what? Never mind. He stalked into the kitchen and got the pepper himself and sprinkled it into the soup. There, he snarled. Now, Bunny Rabbit, put the soup on the fire. Bunny put the soup in the fire. The fire went hiss. So did the scruffy varmint. I'll teach you. He howled, I will have soup, bunny rabbit soup, and I know just the bunny to use, the bunny rabbit who never listens. Buddy listened. Oh no, what do you think might happen? He also hopped very, very, very fast, faster than he had ever hopped in his life. He sees the left-right sign. He whizzed up the road past the vegetable stand and into the safety of his house. And a little later, when Buddy's parents asked him to bring a pen and a slice of bread, Buddy listened.